All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Before we get started, just a couple of those normal reminders. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. You can type those in by clicking the Q&A or chat section in your control panel. Feel free to chat between yourselves as well throughout. We will be posting a recording of the webinar on our blog. The link for that will be shown at the end. And if you'd like a PDF copy of the presentation, there will be a link to download that on that same post as the recording. If your question does not get answered today, or if you think of any new ones, uh, please email our support inbox, which will be shown at the end as well. All right, so what is on the agenda for today? Functional fitness, functional strength training, functional exercise, or other terms you may hear that mean the same thing. So I'm not sure how many of you have heard of this term before. It's kind of been a buzzword um, for a little while. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about what it is, we're gonna talk about the reasons we should pay attention to this type of exercise, this type of workout, and then um, why we should incorporate it into our daily lives, and then how to incorporate it into our daily lives. So let's start with the basics. What is functional fitness? In very basic terms, functional fitness is training your body for everyday activities in order to make that daily movement easier and safer. So think about the actions that you may do daily right now. Things like putting away groceries, carrying a laundry basket up the stairs, playing on the floor with your kids, your grandkids, your pets, simply getting up off of the floor after an activity. Or then think about things you have to do at work. You have to bend down to change the copier paper. You have to climb up into your truck. The, the possibilities and things are endless. So some of you may have no problem doing any of those things, right? Some of you may be in a place where you might creak or groan maybe a little bit doing them, right? And then a few of you may not be able to do some of those specific tasks at all at this point. So the goal of functional fitness is to be able to keep your body strong enough to enjoy a high quality of life at home and at work for as long as possible, to be able to complete those what we consider normal daily activities of living at home and at work, hopefully with minimal issues. Right? Now, there are some out there that argue that any exercise can be considered functional because anything that improves your strength or your fitness is going to help you function better in daily life, which makes sense. I absolutely agree with that. But the difference with functional fitness is that instead of focusing on exercises for each individual muscle group, so like doing bicep curls, just your arms, then just doing calf raises for the back of those legs, isolating those specific muscles, with functional exercises, functional fitness, you work several of those muscle groups at the same time and you try to mimic the movements better how your body moves naturally during the day, right? In different planes, different things, if we're getting into physics, right? We're not just going up and down typically with our arms. We've got different, different things in motion. So uh, compound exercise is a term used to describe using more than one muscle group working together for the movement. So that's one type of exercise that goes into functional fitness. I'm gonna go into some specific exercises here in a bit, but another example that I found that I like to use is think about if you're walking on the treadmill versus going on a hike. If you walk on the treadmill, that's fantastic, right? It's had lots of benefits. The main benefit is going to be getting your heart rate up you're strengthening your legs as well, but it's one movement, it's repetitive, um, you know, it's on one plane, if you will, again, one direction. If you go outside for a hike, let's say, you're gonna challenge other muscles. So muscles that stabilize your knees and ankles more. You're also going to work other areas like your stability, like your balance as well, because you're walking on uneven ground and such, right? So again, if we make our workouts closer to what we do in real life, it just it's just gonna benefit us, us that much more. There's nothing wrong with other exercises. I feel like functional fitness is really about making your workouts more efficient as well, right? So instead of taking the time to work each muscle individually, you're working many at a time along with things like balance. So it becomes more effective, more efficient, 
because it can usually be done in a shorter amount of time as well. Win-win, in my opinion, with these types of exercises. And now I know a lot of you probably already do some workouts that may already incorporate these types of exercises with multiple muscle groups, which is fantastic. And you can also get really intense with the types of functional exercises you do. You've got the high intensity interval training, things like that. Today, we're going to keep it fairly basic, but just know that there are functional exercises that progress really with every fitness level. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I kind of already started this, but let's dive into those benefits of functional fitness. So the first and biggest one was what I already said. We want to make our everyday activities easier and safer, right? The main purpose of this is to be able to do things like carry those groceries in from the garage, to bend down to pick up the laundry basket, to carry your kids or grandkids or pets around. Not being able to do something like pick yourself up off the floor is a big reason that people aren't able to stay in their homes independently. So again, massive, massive benefit to working on things like functional fitness exercises. And because of the movements you do, another benefit that goes along with this is core strength. So your core are those abdominal muscles, those abs, and then all of the muscles that wrap around your waist in your stomach. So having a stronger core not only helps you do daily activities, but it's also going to help with things like your posture. It's going to help with back support, which translates into helping with things like lower back pain. Now, I know a lot of you out there might struggle with that, right? So building your core with different types of movements that are gonna challenge your stability, your balance, those stabilizing muscles can help combat back pain. And again, functional exercises incorporate those types of those types of movements. Now, these types of movements also improve your balance, stability, coordination, which again, I've already touched on. And I think a lot of us take these specific things kind of for granted. It's not just intentional balance and coordination that we need to think about. So it's not about, oh, I want to be able to do these yoga poses, things like that. Something as simple as stepping off a curb or, again, carrying something up the stairs requires a good amount of balance and coordination, which, again, I think we kind of take for granted, or most of us do, not all of us. We tend to not notice that we need that until we're struggling with it, right? Which tends to tends to be as we age, but there's lots of other factors that go into it. But if we focus on it now, we can delay those concerns, hopefully even longer. Another benefit of incorporating functional wellness is really it's just a great and simple way to add variety to your current workouts too. So if you already have some workouts, think about incorporating some of these things that we're gonna talk about if you aren't already. What happens is, when we do the same workout, when we do the same thing every day for long periods of time, our body gets more efficient at those movements. And then in turn, it burns less calories. It doesn't use as much muscle strength to do it, right? Which kind of can hurt with some of our goals. So adding variety helps so that the body doesn't get used to the same thing. And then typically has to burn more calories during those workouts because it's not used to those movements. It has to adjust and it's like, whoa, okay, I need to work a little harder. That can help prevent plateaus with things like weight loss and strength gains as well. So again, variety, that's not just with functional fitness, that's with every type of fitness, but it's a really good thought with anything when you're working out. You can also improve your sport specific skills with functional exercises. So whether you're a competitive athlete or just playing pickleball, maybe a few days a week, adding in these functional exercises to your routine can absolutely carry over into that athletic performance, especially if you look for exercises that mimic the movements that you do on the court, on the field, on the course, wherever it is, that can make you stronger in those particular actions right? It, it makes sense. If you're stronger, if you're moving your body with more resistance in that same motion that you do in some of those activities, it's going to make it stronger. It's going to help your performance, right? And again, that includes daily activities too, but I think a lot of people get it a little more with that sports specific reference. Um, and then just the last benefit, definitely not the only benefits here, but the last one I'm going to talk about today is these exercises can be a really great way to start an exercise routine if you're not really in one because a lot of the beginner ones require no equipment. 
I mentioned before that you can get really intense and you can use all sorts of different things, but to get started, you can use your body weight and you're going to start to see benefits with some of these exercises. Now, a couple things to think about before you get started. Um, anyone recovering from a recent injury, especially if it involves muscles, bones, ligaments, be careful with functional strength training, uh, specifically for the time being. Follow doctor's recommendations before starting any exercise program. Uh, and then individuals with certain medical conditions, things like severe arthritis, osteoporosis, uncontrolled heart disease, different areas, again, not the only list, but things that might require modifications or alternative exercise options. So again, chat with your doctor, chat with your physical therapist, whoever you may be working on, working with before starting a routine, just to ensure that it's appropriate for you. Okay, so let's get some examples of exercises that you can start incorporating that qualify as functional. Now, you probably have heard of all of these uh, exercises, I hope anyways, um, because it's, this is as simple as it gets, right? So I hope you're already including these in your, in your exercise, but if not, here are some things to get started. Now, again, this is by no means all of the options, just some basic ideas to get you started. And these ones specifically, they're not all those compound movements, but they do all work multiple muscle groups. So if you are doing most of these, do some research, see how you can continue to progress. And another note, I'm not going to go in and describe how to do these exercises. So please be sure you're looking up how to perform them safely if you're not familiar with how to execute those movements, okay? So let's start with push-ups, that top picture. Most of us are familiar with these, right? This exercise strengthens, strengthens your chest, your shoulders, your triceps, which are the back of those upper arms, many muscles that you use when you're doing those day-to-day -day tasks. So working these muscles is gonna translate into so many different things um, with everyday movement. So pushing open doors, again, carrying things, groceries, playing with your kids, so lots of different ways that just this simple movement can translate into our daily activities. Now you can modify push-ups by going down on your knees instead of your toes. You can progress this exercise by doing things like incline push-ups where your hands are on a bench or a step or decline push-ups where your feet are on a bench or a step. Those slight variations target just little different muscle groups and they can also make the movement harder, typically do make the movement harder, depending on, on what you're what exactly you're doing. Next are squats. So that second picture on the right there. Squats are gonna work your legs, your core, which again, we talked about, those abs and the, the stomach muscles, and then your glutes, which are the butt muscles, right? Squats are something that we do a ton in our day-to-day -day life if we stop and think about it, right? Things like picking things off of the floor, getting yourself off of the floor, getting yourself out of a chair, just to name a few. So again, lots of different ways this translates into daily life. You can modify squats by having a chair behind you and going only as low as you're comfortable. You can progress with squats by going deeper, adding weights, or doing things like jump squats. Lots of fun variation with squats out there if you do some research. And then we have lunges, that third picture here. So lunges are gonna work your quads and your hamstrings, uh, the front and the back of your thighs, your glutes a little bit too, and even you know upper body, core, depending on what you're doing with that upper body. But lunges are gonna mimic everyday activities like climbing stairs, getting out of your car, I mean, walking, right? Um, similar to squats, you can modify these by just not going as low into the movement if you have knee concerns, anything like that. There are many variations to, pro to progress squats, just like our, or excuse me, lunges, just like our squats. So adding weights, doing walking lunges, lateral lunges, reverse lunges, lots of more, lots of fun ways to torture those legs out there between the squats and the lunges. So again, do some research, find some fun things that you can incorporate into your workout. Next, we have planks. The first picture works well for this exercise as well, so I didn't add this, except her her arms would be fully extended in a plank. So again, these are similar to push-ups, um, but these are what are called an isometric exercise, where you don't move while you do the work. So the muscles of the chest and arms are contracted by just squeezing in place, not through a movement. So planks are going to strengthen that core again. 
your back, your shoulders, all of which we use on a daily basis. Planks also engage our deep abdominal muscles, so transverse abdominis, rectus abdominis, which is the muscles we think of as our six pack, and the obliques, which is the muscles on the sides, on your sides of your torso. So planks, again, help with similar things as the push-ups do, as well as they can help with better posture and reduce back pain again, due to that improved stability of our core as we strengthen those muscles. We talked about how important the core was to functional movements, and this is a big one for that, right? You can modify a plank similar to a push-up where you go down on your knees, and you can also go down on your forearm, but if it bothers your wrist, you can start out with something very easy in a short amount of time that you're holding it. And then you can do the incline and decline as progressions as well as a couple options um, just to make it a little harder. If any of you do any of these exercises and have any other progressions you want to throw in the chat, please do. Um, feel free to share what you're doing with your exercises as well. And then last, we have glute bridges, those bottom pictures. So this exercise works part of what is called your posterior chain. So the back muscles of your body goes all the way down. So bridges specifically target those glutes, again, those butt muscles, hamstrings, and then muscles along our spine. These muscles are extremely helpful for balance and stability. So again, we talked about when you're thinking about daily activities, having balance and stability when carrying things or simply walking on uneven surfaces. Doing exercises that strengthen those muscles is super helpful with that. You can modify bridges really by how long you hold them. Um, there's not a, a huge change in you know the form, but you can hold them for shorter. Um, and as far as when you go down and up, how many repetitions you do. And then in one option for progression is just by extending one leg straight. So for these exercises specifically, um, going through them and doing 12 repetitions, 10 to 12, depending on how hard they are for you. Some of you might be able to go up to 15. But if you do 10 to 15 for each movement with maybe 30 seconds to a minute rest between each exercise, and then working up to going through that circuit of each exercise three times through is kind of a good uh, goal to get to. And again, modify as needed. And then when you can do them easily and without breaking form, start to look at progressions. All right, I did include some intermediate exercise options as well. So these include more of those compound movements we talked about earlier. So if you don't have weights, that's not a problem. You don't need to use weights to do these movements still. But as you look to progress, you might wanna think about getting weights, but you can also use things like soup cans, milk jugs, really anything that you can hold easily that are similar weights in each hand or same weights in each hand. So that first picture is a step up to a shoulder press, that top left one there. So you simply step up onto a bench and then you do a shoulder press, bringing those arms above your head. And then you switch your feet each time. I really like this exercise because I can, you can really see the way it translates into real life, at least for myself. Anyone out there height challenged like I am, I am not a tall person. So I have to step up on a footstool to put away things in my kitchen on a daily basis, right? So this exercise mimics that almost exactly. Now, even if you have the luxury of being taller than me, uh, there are still plenty of times where we need to lift things or want to lift things above our head, right? So it translates in, in many different ways. Now you can modify this exercise by either not adding weights or you can keep both feet on that bench uh, as you step up as well. You can progress by making the step higher and adding more weight to make it a little bit harder. Deadlifts are a great functional exercise as well, that second picture. This starts with a squat down to pick up the weight, in this case, a barbell, and then you stand back up, strengthening a lot of muscles in your legs, your core, that posterior chain that we talked about, your upper back and your shoulders. I compare this one to picking up uh, things off the floor, kids, pets, toys, laundry, again, whatever it is. A lot of those things are wiggly, but still, you know, dead weight, right? When we're lifting them up. So you have to be strong and you have to have balance. You have to have stability to do that in a safe way. 
modifications for this exercise are mainly with how much weight uh, you have that you're picking up. Again, you can start with no weight if you want to. All right, goblet squat, which is that third picture, um, is next. So this is another squat option, but this one gets a little more into the glutes because if she goes down a little bit further and you're typically adding weight to that, but again, you don't have to. Again, just your daily function of getting up off of a chair, walking upstairs, so many ways this movement translates into real life. And again, modifications and progressions can come with how low you go into the squat, taking the weight away or adding more. Oh yes, pool movements too. If you have chronic pain issues, thank you for that chat that I just noticed there. Um, definitely lots of, lots of modifications with these exercises. Again, talk to your doctor, talk to your physical therapist if you have any concerns with doing them regularly. So thank you for that tip. All right, next is the single leg dumbbell row, which is that second from the bottom. So this one's gonna add that balance and stability factor a ton, right? As you can see, it also targets those upper back muscles along with the core and all the other muscles you're working. I feel like the upper back muscles are a lot of times forgotten about. And with how we are now with our poor posture when we're on our phones and things like that, they're really, really important to do movements that strengthen those muscles specifically because um, they're, you know, support for our spine. They help keep our head aligned. They support our head when turning. They help, help support our shoulder and arm movement. So again, lots of things we do on a daily basis. So modifications, uh, you can keep that back leg on the ground. You can take away the weights and then progressions, again, adding more weights, more repetitions, things like that. And then last, we have the wood chop. This one is a great total body movement, targets the shoulders and the abs. Upper body strength specifically is one of the top indicators of being able to live independently. So movements that work those muscles are incredibly important. So you can see she's at the top of her movement here. As she moves down, she's gonna bring that weight down to the other side of her body. And then you can go down into a squat if you want, or you can keep it higher for a little easier movement. And again, weight is going to be the main progression or how many that you're doing. Don't forget to do both sides for all of the movements um, that you're doing one at a time. Or if you're standing on one leg, make sure you're switching um, to the other leg as well. So again, you'd aim for that same goal. Again, depending on where you're at, it's, it's really going to be individual as far as how many you're doing. But if you're beginner specifically, three sets of those 12 repetitions of each exercise. If you're looking for a quick workout, again, 30 seconds to a minute rest between, you can modify that to make it a little more difficult too and get a little more into that cardio. So, you know, just some things to think about. All right, as we wrap up here, just a few more things to consider. So like I mentioned, you don't have to use weights for any of these movements, but it will help you progress once you get to the point where your the movements are too easy just to do with your body weight. Um, so you can get weights if you want. You can also use resistance bands, which are really easy to store and are pretty cheap too. So that's another option as well if you're looking for different progressions. Um, doing those exercises all in a row for three times through uh, that I recommended is what's considered a circuit, right? So circuit training is really effective and efficient. And I really like that type of workout because you can also incorporate some cardio as well. So working out for that heart and the lungs. So for example, if you do those squats first, you know, for however many repetitions, then you can add something like jumping jacks as your next one before you would jump into like the lunges, right? So we're just adding in more components and it's still a nice, quick, efficient workout. Circuits are really easy to adapt and add different exercises each time to keep up with that variety that we talked about as well that can help keep your muscles um, guessing and make sure that you keep progressing with your, with your fitness. And then another thing, I've said this a couple of times or kind of in a roundabout way, you know, adding balance training to your movement. Some of it's already built in with those exercises, but you can progress almost all of the exercises with a balance and stability progression. So you can add an unstable surface like a balance board or just a foam pad. Some people use those BOSU balls, which is like half of an exercise ball. That one's pretty challenging. So be careful if you're going to do that. Um, 
adding dynamic movement. So again, some of the exercises already have this, but if you can incorporate movements like lunges, step ups, lateral movement to like that, a shoulder press, for example, not just a step up, you can do different things while doing that upper body work too. So again, we're looking for things that challenge our balance and engage even more muscles that we may not even think of by just adding small movements to some of those exercises. More efficient, more effective. And then visual focus is another thing too. Um, you can fix your gaze on a specific point during exercises. This can help work on balance and coordination as well. So something, again, same movement, just try to focus on one thing. It can just help a little bit. And then don't forget about that core. I've said that word a lot today. Um, you can actively focus on squeezing and engaging those ab muscles while performing any of these exercises. And also when you're just sitting right now, like if you can squeeze that core in, you're getting that isometric exercise without even doing anything. So again, that strong core contributes to overall stability, overall good balance, things like that. So with your core, don't just wait to do it while you're exercising or specific exercises that, that focus on the core, do it with every exercise you're doing and do it while you're just sitting in the car at your desk, anything. All right, that is all we've got for today. So again, just to summarize, it's really just about being aware of the exercises out there that can really help your daily living. So if you're not working out right now, these are great things to get started with. If you already have a great routine, just take a look to make sure that you're including functional fitness in those workouts, right? And then make sure you continue to progress to keep seeing great benefits. Don't forget about that. And then get started, right? Your future self will thank you. So get started today with all of this fun stuff, right? All right, we will, I'll have time for questions here, but let me just go over what our next webinars are coming up. August, we're gonna talk about sleep. We did this webinar a few years ago, but it's always good to reiterate the importance of sleep. So we'll talk about that again. And then bad diets in September. I feel like that's gonna be a big one. We'll talk about just the different types of eating that are out there, You know what, what experts kind of say as far as what you should look for um, with your eating specifically. So we'll get into that. That's gonna be a popular one. If you do get lifestyle rewards points for watching the webinar and answering the questions, these are going to be your questions. So I'll give you a second to do a screenshot if you're able to. Um, most of you don't need to answer the questions. I think I say this most times, but if you do, these are what they're going to be. These will be on the slide deck that you can download on the, the blog post as well. So if you don't catch them right now, you'll be able to see those um, when you go, if you go onto our blog and download the, the slides as well, or you can watch the recording and pause it too. So yeah, you can get a, I see a question, you can get a copy of the presentation on our blog post that's gonna be posted within the next, with the holiday, I'm hoping we'll get it posted today. If not um, by Friday, it should be posted for you um, on our blog, which I will change over here. So. Um, in the middle here, healthcheck360.com forward slash blog. That's where you're going to watch the past webinars. That's where you can download the slides. That's where you can register for upcoming webinars. And then we are on social media, all that fun stuff. So check us out on there. And then if you do want to chat with a health coach, you can give us a call and set up a time to talk, or you can email healthcoach at healthcheck360.com. And we will be more than happy to answer your questions.